You have disappointed me, Edelgard. It's not her. It, it, like, really? To think that a descendant of House Heresbelg would dare betray the Holy Church. Is it really her? Professor, kill Edelgard at once. Nah, I need to hear her out. She is a danger to all of Fodlin. Such a rebellious heart cannot be allowed to keep beating. I have achieved my objective. I will retreat. It is you? Farewell, Professor. If we meet again, it will be on the battlefield. It was you! Come, Hubert. Wow! Wait a second! What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to some more Fire Emblem Three Houses. And I am so looking forward to what we have going on today. I think we're about to get our conversation, the conversation I've been waiting for for the longest time. But first, I've done little things. Why, hello there. I, you might see my points are at 30 right now. I actually connected to fates. Uh, I won't say who they are. Uh, and I actually... I come back soon now. So what I did is I realized that for a pretty solid price, if we go to the item exchange, uh, just in case you guys are uh, playing the game yourself, or, you know, well, I think at this point, most people have already played. My secret are these colored flower seeds. Uh, with the amount of money I had, it was easy to just purchase a bunch of them. Uh, as you can see, I still have 113 left. Um, and I spent like, I think, 60K, maybe 70K. And I was able to get my, uh, sell enough of those to get to 10,000 uh, points. And I actually was able to do that twice. But as I was trying to explain, if you connect, you can only connect two people. I thought you could connect multiple people, um, but for some reason the game will only let you do one pair. So I chose a pair that I thought would be strategic and would make the matchups more interesting. So I'll leave it a surprise for now. Yeah. All right, we should be good. With that being said, let's go. Now, I will say I tried ending this before um, to see if uh, the scene where you choose somebody pops up because I was curious if it was the ending. And I saw a scene pop up and I immediately closed the game. I don't know what it said. I just know I saw Dimitri. I'm hoping. So, yeah, a couple things. One, I'm still wondering if Anselma herself will show up in some way, shape, or form. Two, though, if I had to hope. I sincerely hope it is Edelgard who shows up. We're about to meet her. Come on, Edelgard. Come on. Professor, I suppose you think you can defeat me, is that right? I've always done it. But I will never give up. Even if my arms and legs failed me, I would still find a way to move forward. What is- why are you doing this? I will smash that false goddess and her minion into the ground. I will fight to free this world from her vile grasp. Foss, your beef is with S with Sothis then. Well, I understand they're not so far removed from my own. Yes, but you lost that chance when you didn't team up with him. But without sufficient knowledge of this land's suffering, I can't entrust Fodlin to you. Then you should have told us about Perhaps. it. Perhaps. I dare say it's true that I don't fully understand the history of Fodlin. Yeah. Still, I've seen many things in my life. Don't worry. I'll finish the job for you. That's true! You don't know what Claude's been through in Omira. Professor, do you think Edelgard will show up? I hope so. I'm gonna speak it into existence. She will. Well, well. <gasps> It's been a long time, Professor. And hello to you too, Dimitri. I feel like... Oh, I don't know. I got chills. Like, I haven't... 
Like, I really haven't spoken to her in, like, over a year. Hey, Edelgard. And Hubert, Edelgard. too. I did not think you would actually accept my request. I have my doubts as well. Call it a win. Well then, what did you want to talk about? Your goals! Why are you doing this? Just, can we, can we not just talk? Do we have to fight? I will get straight to the point. Why did you start this war? Exactly, Dimitri. That's, that's the question. That's the million dollar question. Why? There had to be a way to change things in your territory without the need for so many senseless casualties. Now that part I wonder about, but let's see. It may be hard to believe, but this is the way that leads to the fewest casualties in the end. Don't you see? Explain that to me. How could I? Countless people have already lost their lives in this conflict. Uh-huh. The longer we took to revolt, the more victims this crooked world would have claimed. Revolt is one thing, but like... The world. Okay, I'll let her speak. I'll let her speak. I weighed the victims of war against the victims of the world as it is now, and I chose the former. The victims of the war against the victims of the world it is now. Are multiple? Are many people dying that much? Like, is there something that I'm just not seeing? I believe that I have chosen the best path, the only path. Even after seeing the faces of those who have suffered the ravages of war. You would still force them to throw their lives away for the future? You are obsessively devoted to this war and deaf to the screams of its victims. I would also kind of echo that. Like, I just don't see how war would be the answer. You cannot change the cycle of the strong dominating the weak with a method like that. You're wrong. That very cycle is exactly what I have devoted my life and my power to destroy. Because so this is your goal and in theory, so this would be stronger than you. Or any of us besides, you know, yours truly. If after all of this, you believe the weak will still be weak, that is only because they are too used to relying on others instead of on themselves. <sighs> I mean... <sighs> I get what you're saying, but that doesn't have to do with the war! Yes, perhaps someone as strong as you are can claim something like that. But you cannot force that belief onto others. People hmm. aren't as strong as you think they are. There are those who cannot live without their faith. And those who cannot go on once they have lost their reason for living. You know, Dimitri brings up a good point. I don't like speaking about it, but... Obviously, people would follow the Church of Seros because it gives them directive, you know, a way to move forward. Regardless on if it was right or not, without it, they probably feel lost and they'd have to find some strength elsewhere. And maybe they can do that, but she's not saying the main thing. Even though I had to do some questionable things uh -huh. to achieve that goal, I wished to see Sothis, my mother. Once more. Okay, that might be where Edelgard lies. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter for this route. But Grey is gonna die soon. But what did Rhea do? Your path will not be able to save them. It is the path of the strong, and so it could only benefit the strong. And that is true. With war, you know, only the strongest team was able to make it out of the battle of the eagle and lion right the blue lions decimated the alliance in story canon and the empire and now the alliance is now under the kingdom it really whoever wins this war is just who's the strongest you know who had the better plans who had the more powerful soldiers <sighs> <laughs> so you consider me strong do you honestly no um, you never hit me, uh, never had an issue defeating you, but I understand that you are one of the strongest people in the game. Even if one clings to their faith, the goddess will never answer them. Countless souls will be lost that way, living without purpose. But they... 
you can't really say it's without a purpose though even if they're never answered by Sothis they can still live their life doing things that are you know just and make them happy at least and as long as the church itself isn't actually hurting people the only thing I've seen happen is when Rhea was upset with the Western Church and I'm pretty sure now that was on the Agarthans' orders. So why... I'm missing the point into where war was necessary. If you had to do that for your own people, I could understand. But why war? And I can be counted among those who have died that way as well. Do you mind explaining that? But that's why I must change this world. On behalf of the silent and weak. Okay, but why do we have to fight right now? Can we just, like, say, you know, a ceasefire? And do you intend to become a goddess yourself? Yeah. Will you steal the power to take action from the broken-hearted masses you claim to defend? The ones who can truly change the way of the world are not the rulers, but the people. Well, I'd say it's more of a combination thing, Dimitri, but I like what you said. Pushing your own sense of justice and your own ideals onto even one other person is nothing more than self-righteousness. Hmm. Maybe it is self-righteousness, but it doesn't matter. Someone has to take action and put a stop to this world's endless blood-stained history. And how is it going to end, Nadelgar? How are you going to make sure that people don't fight anymore? Because the only way that I can see that you can do that would require you to basically have a utopian type society. And every time that happens, anybody read the book 1984? Doesn't end up well. They might revolt. Like you basically have to take away people's freedom to choose in order to have a society where they don't fight. As long as people have the free will to do what they want to do, they're gonna fight. You can minimize the damage. And I'm all for that. But you can't remove it completely. Do you not believe in the power of the people to join together and rise up? And that's another thing. Like, you could have talked to Dimitri and Claw and been like, hey, I want to change the world. You guys want to help me? Why didn't you just have to fight us first? Humans are weak creatures, but they are also creatures who help each other, support yes. each other, and yes. together find the right path. Is that not possible, Edelgard? I have learned that humans are capable of all that from the professor and from everyone in my life. I doubt a highborn person like yourself could know how the poor feel or what motivates them. You might disagree, Edelgard, but you're wrong. Dimitri's had his fair, sh fair share of troubles and trials and tribulations. You should know. This is nonsense. Though, I'm finally starting to understand how you feel. So there's no talking? But that makes it even clearer to me that we can never fully understand each other. Because you already made a judgment on how his life is. You already said there's no way that he can understand you. You didn't even give him a chance to try. I feel the same. I finally understand what you believe is right. Goodbye, Dimitri. Goodbye, Edelgard. Wait, Edelgard. There is something I must give you. Is it, uh, her dagger? This is for you. Hmm. Use it to cut a path to the future you wish for. And I will rise up to meet you there, El. So that's what she called herself? <sighs> Does that change your mind? Didn't even know who he was. Wow. Oh, so it's true. They got Sprite? Are really going away? Going back home? And by the way, somebody mentioned that it was... Something about Edelgard's name. This explains it. She called herself L. I thought she wouldn't introduce herself as the Adrestrian Princess. There's nothing I can do about it. It's all happening so fast. I'm as surprised as you are. This looks like a different person. I mean, not just the hair, also the age, mannerisms, everything. Oh. To be honest, they both do. Um, here. I want you to have this. L, listen to me. 
No matter how hard things get, you can't give in, okay? You've got to cut a path to the future you wish for, no matter what. It's... a dagger? Why would you give me something like this? Oh, um... I'm sorry. I couldn't think of anything better to give you. Edelgard? What are you doing? It's time to go. Oh. Hurry and get in the carriage. Well, that go. He just said her name. You don't care, do you? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Uncle. I have to go now. I, I remember now. You gave me a dagger all those years ago. So basically, what I'm getting from this conversation is the reason Edelgard didn't talk to Dimitri or Claw is because she believed Dimitri and Claw could not understand her way. And admittedly, if she was so stuck on this war path, then yeah. <laughs> I'm still sorry about that. I should have given you something that would have made you happier. Perhaps. At the time, I was quite flustered by such a dangerous gift. I left without giving you a proper response. And that was the last time we saw each other. Mm, no, it wasn't. True. It is a sweet memory with a bitter ending. You guys are seeing each other right now. I'm afraid it will do no good to reminisce, Dimitri. That girl you knew back then is gone. As good as dead. But I'll tell you now what I wasn't able to tell you back then. Has Huber said a single thing? Thank you, my dear forgotten friend. Because of you, I never lost my heart. Well, that's nice. Are we still gonna fight? As for the future. That will be decided in battle. King of Fargus, as the Emperor, I shall await your arrival in Enbar. <sighs> well, we tried. At the very least, we tried. Oh, is this it? Yeah. I didn't save the dadgum game. Sorry. It looks like I'm going to have to leave you now. One day, I hope you'll give this ring to someone you love as well as I love her. Well, this is an easy choice, but let's just, uh... So you can I can- I can choose no one. That's an option. Wait, so people mentioned that I can still give it to Gilbert or Aloise, though. That is interesting. Um, but no one should be surprised at my decision, right? That, that, this is no surprise. No, no surprise. It's happy. All right. Okay. So, mission is next. Let me just see. Is it assault on Enbar? In the streets. Yep, yeah, I figured. Okay. Let, let's talk about what just happened. We finally talked. And as far as... Uh, so, from Edelgard's point of view, she believes that what she is doing is for the best. Dimitri seems to somehow get it. I'll be honest and say, I still am lost on many aspects. I mean, I can assume. So, because of Edelgard's past, she felt trapped and... She felt that war was the only way out. That war would somehow help people and save them. If I can speak frankly, I, I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. What Edelgard had to do to convince me was to convince me that starting war in the first place, that she had a reasonable cause. In a sense, what she said was along the lines of the only way I would sort of accept it. The only way I would sort of accept war is if 
people were being oppressed and there was like literally to gain their freedom, right? Because I don't like saying it's a good thing, but I would certainly not look down on anybody who is fighting for their freedom. And that's the approach that Edelgard had when she was talking to Dimitri. Like, she was fighting for freedom. And from her perspective, it seemed like she was looking at Dimitri as, you're rich, you know, you never really had to do that. You were born into nobility. And I'm assuming Edelgard, you know, her station was questioned, you know, her mom had to leave. Something happened with her father. And because of all of that, she is her she was not as just born into royalty or similar to how claude all he had to do was just show up and say hey i got the crest of regan and they let him in you know it, it was simple as that it seems like edelgard had to fight her way up to the top and she had to continue to fight and that that was a never-ending battle for her but I also think that she is assuming that that is what everybody else wants. Because I can tell you, she's outnumbered. The Kingdom and the Alliance don't want that. And she's working with the most corrupt of individuals to get said freedom. At the end of the day, Cornelia was making the kingdom. She Cornelia was the very type of person Edelgard was talking about rising up against. So was Lawrence's father. So was apparently, well, I mean, I think she took care of Ferdinand's father, so we, we won't count him. The Agarthans, in a sense, are also talking in that same type of manner. That's why I said Edelgard talks like an Agarthan to me. The Agarthans think that, well, not think, from what we heard about the story, Sothis nearly wiped all of them out, except for the remaining ones who went to hide underground. And so they vowed revenge against Sothis and her children, of course. That being Rhea and, you know, Sethleen, Keyhole, Indek, Macuel, all of them. And, okay. And then, so then they also began to sow deceit and basically cause the same amount of destruction that was dealt onto them and for me that's not freedom that's vengeance right if they only want to take out the person in charge like edelgard has Rhea. what did they need uh set up and flame for also it would that make them stop and if so why didn't they continue until they captured them how did the knights escape in the first place anyway? That's a good question, but... Well, I mean, they had an army. They probably just withdrew once they realized the monastery was lost. I I don't want to call her dumb because I still feel like there's something I'm missing. I don't... Well, I, when I meant why, I meant why does Edelgard feel so strongly? And to more in-depth, not just what she says, but why she says what she says what was her upbringing and all that stuff i need to know as much about edelgard as i can but i guess for dimitri's sake he got what he needed to and there i don't was there a direct answer on why do they have to fight now you can have different ideals and just say okay we don't agree let's not fight each other because at the end of the day, the whole point is we came to try not to fight. Yet Edelgard still seemed convinced Dimitri had to go down. Either that or he had to surrender. She never said that. She never really gave us an option. So, I think I at least got the answer of why she didn't talk to Dimitri or Claude. And that brings an interesting question on me. 
if she didn't talk to them for the reason that she didn't think they would approve of the war itself, the same would go for me. So how is she going to convince me when it's actually time for her route? We're almost there, and I have something I want to say about that very subject when we, before we start her route, but now is not the time. For now, that was what I wanted. It just didn't go the way I hoped it would. So, with that being said, I think I'll move on to the mission now. So, uh, this is the end of the episode for you guys. So, uh, for that, I will see you all next time. You know, after all this time, you know, after anticipating this moment for so long, I really thought that I would be furious with Edelgard once we got to this moment and I heard her explanation. And like I said, this wasn't the full thing. There's still a big part that's missing. But even then, what I felt wasn't anger here. It was more sadness and frustration. Because from my perspective, it seems like whatever Edelgard experienced, it's made her close-minded. A big thing that I focused in on was how Edelgard was saying that because of Dimitri's birth, there were many things that he didn't understand. That was the same basic thing that she told to Claude. She doesn't know a majority of their lives. Case in point, Dimitri, she didn't even realize that he was the kid who gave her the dagger. Does she realize? That he's in close contact with the Dew, someone who's involved in the tragedy at Dusker. Does she know about Ash and how he was poor and everything that he had to do to get to even the officer's academy and uh, that he was speaking to Dimitri about his experience or Ingrid, how Ingrid didn't have a lot um, and she wasn't very well off even though she was a noble and how her father had to make sacrifices in order for her to get to the monastery or Mercedes herself who was actually from the empire and came to the kingdom. Instead, she just decided to write everything off, even, you know, Dimitri's change in attitude. She just wrote it all off as you're rich, you wouldn't understand. And to me, that told me that is she really trying to make him understand? No, to me, it didn't matter to her. She was going to do what she was going to do because she felt it was the only way forward. Then she comes across as if you were poor in the empire, you would understand what she's talking about. And you would agree with what she's doing to some extent. But we see two people, Ferdinand and Constance, from the empire, and they flat out disagree with what she's doing. And that's why I kept asking you guys, how can people change that much, especially when it came to Ferdinand? Because... That seems more than just a change in viewpoint. That's like almost a different character. And I'm wondering how that change can even happen. But that's why I say this made me sad because honestly, not I don't know Edelgard as well, but from Dimitri's point of view, I've started to see her more as a character and actually, you know, speaking to her, just speaking to her. And I think I'd argue maybe this is like the first real conversation we've had because the entire time in the monastery I was speaking to a mask. But one last thing I will mention is that I do have to remember for me that Dimitri doesn't know what I know, but Edelgard does. Meaning from what I read in the library, Edelgard's entire speech for getting the empire to come to her side, from my point of view, was based on a lie. And I do know Rhea's complete story, well, no. A good majority of it, one that paints her in a nice light. She's risked her life twice to save us. She explained that the relics are actually her siblings and therefore she has the right to feel upset when things happen with said relics. You know, the crests were actually taken from her siblings and put into humanity by the Agarthans, so of no fault of hers and she was just trying to manage the situation at least as far as i can see she did lie to the people but like i said if it's not causing harm why the need for war like yes if you want to expose Rhea on her lies by all means but i'm missing the leap from exposing her lies removing her from power to war with not only the church but also the other two nations 
One thing I'll add though is how Edelgard was saying Sothis won't answer the people even if they reach out to her and she's one of the ones who have died that way as well. I had to rewatch this conversation multiple times to try to get as much as I could and it finally hit me. What she's probably talking about is that Edelgard, as hard as it is for me to believe because you know I've looked at it so this way for so long, she was probably insanely religious before. And if I had to guess on the time of when she stopped doing that, it's probably when the Agarthans did what they did to her. Maybe she was really begging for Sothis in that moment and of course Sothis never answered her and then she was subjected to horrible torturing and who knows. Well, I mean, Lysithia probably knows. I mean, Lysithia was talking about how there were so many other kids who had died and she alone survived and, you know, she was born with two crests, but her lifespan was also significantly shortened, you know. And I also believe Lysithia was the one to suggest that Edelgard was subjected to it and didn't volunteer to do that on her own. I always thought like there was a test run for Edelgard, but that doesn't necessarily mean Edelgard was, you know, back then that she said, yes, I would like this power. Of course, I could be wrong, but just giving her the benefit of the doubt. If that's the case, then two things. One, I'd always been thinking that the kingdom was called the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. That means of the three leaders, Dimitri probably would support Sothis the most, though, I didn't really get a, a strong feeling uh, that that was the case from him. Ironically, I think the one who's the most like that is Mercedes, and she's originally from the Empire. But two, if I'm not mistaken, we told Claude and Dimitri that we received power from Sothis and she disappeared, correct? And that was right after we fight Kranya. What happens when I tell Edelgard that? Because at that moment, we won't know what her identity is. And I believe that in these other two routes that she had no knowledge that that even existed. But that's something I'll be looking out for. But anyways, anyways. With that being said, the question of the day I'm going to ask you all is, do you have something in your life that brings back fond memories of when you were a child? similar to how Edelgard had the dagger, or Dimitri had the dagger, whichever you want to say. And, and on that note, it makes me think that the old Edelgard wasn't completely gone. If she was, I don't think she would have accepted the dagger at all, you know? Which further, I think, makes it even more s sad and disappointing because Edelgard acknowledged their friendship, and yet she turned around and said, now I'll kill you and your entire army do. Well, you know, not maybe not the entire army, but y you get what I mean. She would eliminate them, even though they were just standing there talking. That is such a wild concept to me. But with that being said, please post your thoughts down in the comments below, though please try not to speak or defend Edelgar. I know that's hard to say, but we haven't had our conversation yet, right? There's obviously a big piece missing, and I need to get that in her route. So I'm not passing judgment on her actions just yet. I'm just saying right now, I find it sad that they have to fight, and I feel like there was another way. But please post your thoughts down in the comments below, and I will see you all next time.